Welcome to this, the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. We, I have some announcements for us today. Uh, there, uh, I hope uh, this week you've gotten your tidings. Um, there's some information in there, certainly about our proposed welcome statement, which we'll be, we'll be talking about today. Um, so please, if you get a chance, uh, pull that off of your email and take a look at it. Um, the men's prayer breakfast will be on Tuesday morning at Panera at 9 o'clock. Uh, if you want to come and join us, uh, feel free. Um, we, as you know, there's a church office administrative vacancy. Uh, we've been working to fill that position. If you know anyone who's interested in uh, certainly being the church administrator, have them contact us uh, and uh, we'll take a look at them. Uh, we'll certainly send out a job description and we'll go from there. We will start a new members group on March 6th. Um, so if you're interested in being a new member uh, or you know someone who is, hasn't joined us in membership yet, um, please let us know and we'll make sure you're included in that. And then sometime in March, I think March 23rd, um, we will do uh, an installation. Next week, as promised, Bishop Ortez will be here with us. Uh, Bishop was, uh, was sick the last time we scheduled this in early January, but here she comes again, and I am so looking forward to her presence with us, uh, and she's pretty ins inspirational, so um, I hope that's something that you all enjoy uh, and appreciate. So we all look forward to that, uh, and that's next week. Um, we are beginning to the, well, we're doing a lot to process, uh, uh, get ready for the registrations to be open for the preschool. Uh, it's exciting to see the wonderful things that are happening in the preschool, our growth certainly, and what we're doing and how we're treating the kids and how we're growing with the kids and how the kids are growing. I mean, it's just really amazing. God's hands in all that. So uh, if you know of anybody or you're interested, I know we have about 30 
child, toddler families and um, if any of them are interested in participating in our preschool, uh, you can visit our website, but registration starts on January 15th. Um, with that, we have some prayer concerns. Uh, Reed, Michael Bollinger, Sandy Dietrich, Rick Sheets, Rick Tinney, Carl Gerber, Laurie Wilkie, Jen Ward, Judah Albertson, Dick Blackford and his family at his passing, Rick Butler at his passing and his brother and sister Kim and Mike as they grieve, Cal Prote, Jean and Kay DeMarc, Nancy Fox, Susie Tinney, Danielle Sims, Jamie Sims, Meg and Ellen, and Anna Will. With that, let us begin our worship. Greetings, boys and girls. We're kind of at a different place here this morning, aren't we? Um, we are in the back of the church, and here are the doors to the church as we begin. So today we're going to talk about welcoming and being welcome. Now, I know when I was a little boy, we would go visit my grandmom's house, and my grandmom's house was real tiny, and we were four kids, so we were like, Phew. We were all over the place, and I was the youngest of the four until we had our next three and a couple years later. But we would go to grand, Grandma, we called her Nanny's house. We'd go to Nanny's, and when we got there, we would go rip-roaring all through the house. We'd be opening up the drawers and looking in places because she always hid candy for us to find. And so we were so excited to come just to go search for the candy that was there, whether it be a Tootsie Roll or something like that. And it wasn't until you're older and you start thinking about, why did she do that? Did she not like candy or something? And we realized that she did that because she wanted to make us happy and feel welcomed in her house. And then after we found the candy and the adults, you know, would sit around and talk and stuff, but we'd all sit down and we had the same meal every, every Sunday. We had chicken, fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and corn. You name it, every Sunday, that's what we had. And it, it was simple and it was delightful. And it was delightful because we knew that Nanny really wanted us there. She really wanted to see us. And that was important to her. And you know what, it became important to us. Welcoming at the church is the same thing. You are very important, everyone is very important. They can be different people, all kinds of different people. They are all welcomed. And they're welcome not because we welcome them, but because we know that God welcomes them. And some of them might be dealing with something really nasty or bad, or they're, they're hurt, or they're struggling, or they just need some people to talk to, or they just need to find a way that they feel comfortable connecting with God. And so we welcome everyone. And that's what we're talking about today. And maybe not so much choosing who we welcome, but welcoming everybody that comes along. And we feel that's really important. So today, as we, in the last couple of years, have made great strides in, in welcoming you as children. We have the children's sermon. We welcome you at the altar when we do communion. Um, People really aren't fussy. If you're fussy, if, if you make noise, we certainly want you to be quiet. But if there's noise that erupts, we're all used to it because it's so important to have you with us. That is so important to us. And it's so important to have everyone with us. So today we talk about that because it's not really our welcome, but it's God's welcoming that we all, all of us, every one of us, enjoys. Okay? So let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for welcoming us, and we extend a welcome to anyone that crosses our doors to come and share the love and grace of you with all of us. This we pray in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gift of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you have commanded. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. A reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. 
Glory to you, O Lord. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, but I do not have love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not ir irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been known fully. And now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next reading is Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline to your ear, your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth, but it was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth, Today the scriptures have been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote me as this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that you have heard you've done in Capernaum. And he said, Truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up in three years and six months, and they were serving famine all over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow of Zechapath in Sidim, when he, when, where there were also so many lepers in Israel the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage, and they got up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill in which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off a cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we know that we are welcomed and saved by your grace because you have told us, because we've read the scriptures and we know that, and how flawed we can be. So it is by your grace that we are saved. Help us, as we talk about welcoming today, to open our doors to everyone who needs to hear those words. Because in some of the Christian faiths and people that follow you, that is not the focus for everyone to be able to participate. So Lord, help us as we discern uh, as a congregation the, how just how far our doors are open, whether we mirror the policies and practices that you set before us. Um, so help us and guide us, help us to discern, help us to share our thoughts and opinions with each other in an engaging and graceful, um, way that we can all listen and share and still be a family in the midst of in the midst of this church and this assembly bless us as we begin this process this we ask in your name amen i want to play a video this morning um, of uh ann keeger our council church council representative 
who with others has have been working on our welcome statement for a while. It's also printed in your bulletin. It's also featured in this week's tide or this month's tidings, and we'll talk about it in a minute. Here we go. At Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, we close every service by reciting together as a congregation. We care as friends, we love as family, and we serve as Christ. As a church, we try hard to live up to that statement. We strive to be a church that is welcoming to all, whether a person is a longtime member, looking for a new church home, or just in need of some grace. We affirm that all are welcome in this place, regardless of color, age, marital status, gender identity, sexual identity, economic status, mental or physical health status, culture, or faith tradition, and we do so to continue to try to live by Christ's example of love and acceptance. For the first reading this morning, we hear the very familiar reading from 1 Corinthians 13 about love. And while it is read at most weddings and fits in well, nowhere does it infer or suggest that Paul is talking about marriage or marital love. In fact, it's all about all kinds of love. It is a poem that is about how we should love each other as Jesus has welcomed us. 1 Corinthians 13 is an ideal. It's something that we as Christians should aim or behave towards. First, because Jesus said it a zillion times. And second, because it's the right thing to do. Every, everyone is better off when we love the virtue that guides all of us when love is that virtue. Without love, we are just a noisy gong or clanging cymbals. Ain't that the truth? We hear in the gospel today, Jesus not getting hometown love. I mean, plain and simple, far from it. So today I wanna to talk about love too. Love as Jesus would want us to share it. You see, there are many, many things that get in the way of sharing love with each other. So many things get in the way of us being kind to each other. So many things get in the way of us expressing our faith in Jesus Christ by living the love the way that he did. And there's a little quote from Mother Teresa that's on my wall, and it says, if you judge people, you have no time to love them. We find ways to judge or exclude people one way or another. But Jesus' love and his grace is extended to all people. Jesus' grace is for the white, the red, the yellow, the brown, the black, right? Jesus' grace is for people who are men and women, right? Jesus' grace is for those who are single, married, widowed, divorced, right? Jesus' grace is for those that are heterosexual, homosexual, transgender, or any other sexual identity, right? Jesus' grace is for the Christian, the Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, atheist, or any other religion, right? Jesus' grace is for the poor or the rich, right? Jesus' grace is for the young and the old, right? Jesus' grace is for those who are conservative or liberal, hmm, right? Jesus' grace and his love and his forgiveness is for everyone. We all know that. We as Lutherans and Christians profess that Jesus' grace is for all. And furthermore, we count on it because that wide net of grace welcomes us as we have our faults and our sins. If that net were narrower, it's very well that it would exclude us. So we are all saved by the grace of God. And the problem for us as a church is that just by saying all are welcome really doesn't automatically mean that everyone is welcome here. Every church says all are welcome. And then some of color or someone of color or a gay couple or transgender person walks in and their experience is less than a positive or holy experience. Those, are, those that are in one of those less popular social groups will tell you all are welcome doesn't really mean all are welcome. A church that had posted a welcome statement 
kind of like the one we're proposing that is specific and explicitly names diverse groups and including sexual identities. After three weeks of doing this, their first ever black couple came to worship. It was a predominantly white neighborhood. And the pastor so graciously asked the couple, why, why did you come here? Why did you choose that church? And their answer was because they had read the website and heard the welcome statement. And they figured if it was such an explicit welcome statement that they figured they'd probably be welcome too. Hmm. So the church council and I have been talking about this for well over a year. If you will allow me to be honest, I know that my, the grace that I give is not at the same level of Jesus. I try. I do the best I can. I, I strive to grow, but I know that the church welcome should not be at my level of grace, or anyone else's for that matter, if we profess to follow Jesus Christ. Should we welcome at the level that Jesus Christ welcomes, even if we're a little uncomfortable with that? If it were during Jesus' day, wouldn't he say all tax collectors and all sinners are welcomed here when he preached? Take a look at our bulletin cover. This is a picture of family and a welcome statement. If you had a choice to meet a family that said welcome, or a family that greets you with this, their playful smile and a statement of vulnerability, vulnerability and friendliness, Welcome, we are overjoyed to have you with our family. Which would you think you would be, feel more welcome? We would all select the family with the gracious smile, wouldn't we? Why? Because they made the effort to show their welcoming attitude. And while an explicit, inclusive welcome statement may draw people to our church, who are need, need to hear God's grace and love to them, and for that is good, I need to tell you something else. For me personally, for you, it's not all about them. It is about us. We may never have or attract a rich, diverse collection of people, but we should develop our theological understanding of God's unconditional grace for all. Living in that understanding has rich personal benefits for each one of us and rich benefits for us as a community. Just one more thing. There are many, many different opinions of different lifestyles as there are types. By this statement, we are making one huge endorsement. We are endorsing all people to be part of God's welcoming grace regardless of whatever, because we believe that is what Jesus teaches us when he tells us to love one another. And with the, all that being said, here are the words of St. Paul again. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Hmm. Here is what's on the table. Our church council will not be issuing a welcome statement that they think is right for us. That will be the congregation's decision. We will have a congregational meeting in June or before, and we will have a congregational vote on how we want to proclaim God's grace and welcome. In the meantime, we want everyone, everyone, to talk about it. We want to hear your comments for or against it. We want to include each of you in this process because the process is what makes us grow. And if we all share our thoughts and our ideas, we will grow regardless of what we decide as a congregation. The process of gracious engagement, which is being able to talk about the differences and still be family, is an important skill to perfect. We will not be debating each other. We will be discerning together. And while we get a chance to say whatever we want, we will have plenty of chances to listen 
and hear what others have to say. As I said, this is really a lot about us. It's about how we as a Lutheran church proclaim the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We, with all that we say, walk together in this journey of discernment. The welcome statement is published in February Tidings with other information. We will schedule adult forms of cottage meetings or Zoom meetings and whatever else we need to give everyone a chance to weigh in. And when I hear the gospel to reading this morning, I sense the judgment of Jesus' friends and neighbors. And of course he's over the top and saying he's the Messiah when these people have known him all his life. But he needed to start somewhere and they are so close-minded that they would rather kill him than to hear him out. Didn't they think the Messiah was going to come from somewhere, some hometown? Why were their minds so close that they didn't want to consider the possibility? Hmm. Look at all that they missed. So today I think we all need to grow in this. Talk about it. Talk about it with your spouse. Talk about it with those who you sing together in choir or whatever committee or meeting that you attend. Talk about it with your neighbor. Pick any scriptures that, that, has, that leads you. And, and don't just kind of state your opinion, this is where I am. That's, you know, do the work. Pray, read, do the work. Search for what Jesus is telling you what is right. As your pastor, that's all I can ask. Take some time to engage the meeting, the meetings that are coming up. This is in your hands. Our church will do what we, all of us, think is right. We will all walk together in that decision. May God continue his lovely and generous grace to all people, and may we embrace and welcome it all together. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Guide your church in the ways of faith, hope, and love. Help us to be genuine bearers of your grace and peace. Cultivate ministries and communities of compassion that bear witness to your enduring presence among us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Teach us to live in humility on the earth. Help us to respect the gift of nature and its beauty. Curb arrogance that leads to destruction of natural resources and disregard for future generations. Inspire the work of scientists who urge us to live in harmony with your creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are the refuge of all who seek hope and freedom. Accompany immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers who cross borders to find safety and opportunity. Embolden leaders to draft compassionate policies on behalf of migrants and those who assist them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. Comfort with your love all who are unlonely, fearful, or brokenhearted. Sustain the hope of all those who suffer in your body or spirit, especially Reed Michael Bollinger, Carol Prout, Sandy Dietrich, Jean and Shay DeMarc, Rick Sheets, 
Nancy Fox, Rick Tinney, Susie Tinney, Carl Gerber, Daniel Sims, Laurie Wilkie, Jamie Sims, Jen Ward, Meg and Ellen, Joda Alberson, Ann Will, Dick Blackford and his family at his passing, Rick Butler and his family, and his brother and sister Kim and Mike. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your grace falls upon young and old alike. Bless the gifts of children in this congregation and in this community. Give us humble hearts to follow their leadership. Inspire us with their laughter, their insight, their curiosity. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And let us pray together in the words of our Lord and Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as he forgives those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May we leave with this, from this place with the knowledge of Christ's grace and love and peace for us and also for all people, regardless of whatever. And take that and share that with those that we meet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We care as friends. We love as family. We serve as Christ. Amen. God bless you all.